Hi again, welcome to another video. In front of us, we have a Honda HRX 476. And the job I'm gonna be doing on this today is changing it from an automatic choke to a manual choke. I have the parts I need there off of another engine, which was a manual choke. And yeah, I'm gonna change it all over and show you how to do it. Um, it doesn't just apply to this model. Um, any Honda engine that has a GCV engine on, um, yeah, it'll be the same. So I'm going to take these parts over to the bench and show you what you need to do this conversion and then we'll get it done. So in front of us, I have the manual choke parts I took off the spare engine. I'll just run through what they all are. This is the governor rod and governor spring. This is the governor spring that fits on the governor arm at the bottom. This is a rod that fits onto the choke on top of the carburetor. We have the carburetor there. The mechanism is different on this, being a manual one, to what's on the mower. So I need a different carburetor. Um, I have that mechanism there. And I can show you how the choke works. You pull that back and it pushes that bit up in there. So as I pull that on, it pushes that up. And then that arm moves there. And that makes your choke go on and off. The only thing that is different on some of these is the cable, how it takes the cable, what type. Um, this one is like the, the dog leg one. They get on Honda Easy's a lot, like that. The one actually on the mower is different. It takes the round one, but as you can see, this isn't made for that. So I'm gonna probably just change the cable on the mower as well to a Honda Easy um, throttle cable because the cable on it isn't brilliant anyway. So. I'll go with this one. I have got some somewhere which can take the other um, type, but yeah, I've got loads of these ones because I've broke up a load of Honda Easy's over the years. Um, we have the fuel line and fuel tab. I may not need to use this because um, I'll probably be able to use the one on there, but it's there if I need it. We have this carburetor like shield that goes at the back behind the carburetor. We have that. We have the studs to hold the air filter housing on. Not sure whether I'll need them. I might be able to use the ones that are already on it, but yeah, I've got them if I need them. And then we have this, the air filter housing, and this is different. Uh, it has a third hole in there. So pretty sure that's all the bits I need. If I forgot anything, I'll say it as we go through the video. So now I'll go and get all this on the mower, but firstly, I've got to get what's on the mower, off the mower. So we'll go and get that done now. Just before I start to dismantle this, I'll just explain why I'm actually doing this and changing it to a manual choke. Uh, when this mower starts, it hunts a lot and it messes around a lot until it's warm. And I'm putting that down to the automatic choke. I've got loads of the spares to do this um, conversion. So yeah, I'm just um, gonna do it for peace of mind really, because I much prefer the manual choke. So I'll start taking it all off. So firstly, we just had a cover off in the air filter. And then we have uh, the two carburetor studs here. I haven't quite took them out yet because I'm just going to disconnect the throttle cable. It's just a Phillips screw there. So get that out. Just unhook that. This is a type of cable this mower has, uh, but I'm going to change it to the Honda Easy one because that has a dog leg one to suit the um, choke mechanism I'm putting on this. And also this cable isn't very good. Um, it's all sort of bent up and a bit split and that. So yeah, I'm just going to change that. So I'll just put that out of the way. Uh, I'm going to take them bolts fully out now. Then this housing should come off. You can see there we've only got two bolt holes there. I'm not sure whether it could be used or not, but I'm not gonna even try because I've got the part to come off the spare engine. So the carburetor can almost come off now. Just make sure your fuel is off. Perhaps just say, just right there. And um, so you'll get a lot less fuel come out. There'll be a little bit come out still, but not much. Um, so now I've got to take off them governor rods, but I think what I'm going to do is just undo that. 
bolt there then everything sort of comes away then we have the stop wire there there's like a little piece that holds it in which i just have to squeeze to get it out and i'll just take the wire off that that wire goes to the coil and there's like the stop switch on there uh, i'm gonna now take the carburetor off i think so i'll just unhook it there at the front you can just see I'll just move around slightly just there so firstly we have to take the spring out and then take the rod out get that out of the way so there's not much holding it now at all it's just a fuel line on here so i'll just get that off I'm trying to damage it because i probably will use that again And there we have the old carb. I'll show you that over on the bench um, later on in the video. So now the mechanism is ready to come out. But firstly, I'm just gonna take this rod and spring off of there. They're not needed anymore. Spring might be the same, but the rod isn't different. So get them out of the way. Uh, and I undid that bolt that holds that on. So it's loose, it's just got pulled out like that. So we have that off. So I'll show you that on the bench later on as well. And also that will come off as well. And that's why I needed that block that goes between the carburetor and the block, engine block, because um, yeah, it's all different. All the mechanism is all different. So I'm ready to put the new stuff on. Uh, it is very dirty, this engine, but um, it doesn't matter for the purpose of the video. I will just give it a pressure wash down afterwards um, and just cover the carb up with a bag or something. Uh, yeah, I should have cleaned it before, but weather hasn't really allowed me to get out of there with a pressure washer. So um, yeah, I'll get the new parts and get them fitted. So the manual chuck mechanism is ready to go back on. There's a couple of bits I've got to do. I think you're going to struggle to see me do them. So I'm going to do them off camera. Um, there is where the governor arm spring goes. This is the one I had on the bench and that yeah, just goes in there so that's that spring there and the other thing is just to put that screw in that holds the fuel tap on the screw goes through there there's like a half moon piece on the there on the tap there on the back of it that fits into into there so i'll do them two bits off camera and i'll be back with you when we're bolting this on so now I've done them, I've connected the fuel tap and I've connected that governor arm spring. So now I'm gonna connect the stop wire. So it just pushes on like that. And then that goes through there, just hold it in place. So now I'm gonna bolt the mechanism on, but I'm not gonna go tight with that. I'm just gonna bolt it on just so it's in place at the moment. I'll go up about halfway, so it's holding in place. So that's all looking good. Um, I've got to get the carburetor now, the carb block. Uh, but before I do that, I need to connect the governor rod and governor spring. So I'll go and get them and do that. Here we have the governor rod. The longer part of the spring, you can see that spring just there. That side's longer than that side. That longer side goes to the governor arm. The shorter side goes to the carburetor. So that goes in the top there, like so. And that spring hooks in like that. So they're in place. So here's a carburetor. Um, and this part is a bit tricky to show you, but um, I hope you'll be able to see what I'm doing. But I'll explain first. That block there fits on the engine there. The gasket is stuck on from before, so that's okay to go again. So that goes on first, that plate goes on second, then the carburetor goes on, then that goes all behind the mechanism bit, that plate there, and then we have to put the studs through there to hold that on. So now I'll get all that on. Firstly, I have to put the governor rod in goes in there and then that spring goes in the other hole 
like so. I'm gonna put the fuel line on. I've done hundreds of these, but it's still fiddly. But let's get that fuel line on. So that's done. Just before I put this block and plate on, I just wanna show you there. If you see that sort of circle piece that's in that plastic there, that has to correspond with that hole there. So it goes on like that. Like that. So I'll just put that behind the carb. I have put the choke rod on. I will show you that where it goes in a second. Let's just get this in place. So that one bolt has started. I will unloosen these again because I've got to get the air filter housing on, but I just want to just hold it in place so I can show you really. Um, that is the choke arm there, and that's the part that goes onto the butterfly in there. And if I pull that back, I'll just hold that in. Pull that back now, see it's choking. Just zoom you in so you can see that a little bit better. So, yeah, you can see that there. So that's working. It's quite hard to pull back, actually. The cable will pull it back better than I can. So now I'll just run through what I've done. Um, I've connected the fuel line. I've connected the governor arm spring down there, the two bits I did off camera. I put that bolt in. I've put that governor rod in and the spring. I put the choke rod in and I've put the carb block in and that plate and the carburetor on. So all I have to do now is put the air filter housing back on. There is a breather pipe behind there, which has swung around a little bit under there, but I'll just get it out. So it's ready to connect to the back of that air filter housing. So now I'm ready to put this air filter housing back on. The studs are in, the gasket's in place. So I'm gonna push it through there and then through the carburetor. There is a gasket that's stuck on behind there. So that's all in place and good. So I'll get that started through the carb the studs and then what I'm gonna try and do is as I'm pushing it on I'm gonna push that breather pipe on which it's on now and then I took these out and just lined them up so I'm gonna get behind there now and get this in and then get the studs in So we're almost done now. I've tightened up the bolt that holds the mechanism on there. So that's all done. I'll put that bolt in there that holds their air filter housing on. So that's done and tight. I will just pull the throttle back and yet yeah, that choke is closing. Lovely, closing right up. So that's good. You wanna just look in there and check that it's closing and it's working as it should do. And when I pull that back, it's all closed. So that's good. I wanna check that it's loose and it's not snagging up on anything the governor arm, and that is all good. It's not standing up on anything. So now I've got the air filter cover and the air filter. I have noticed the clip is broke up there that sort of holds this cover in place, but yeah, I'll change that off camera. But yeah, all we have to do is just put that in there like that. I'll just show you the parts I took off and I'll show you how different they are. That is like the mechanism that sort of works the choke. And what you do, you have a little piece that heats up and comes out of the engine the top of the engine and it pushes on that i've actually left that part in the mower i will just show you a picture of that um now i don't see any harm in leaving that in the engine it's just um if it's gonna work it'll only, it'll only be that little pin that will come out a little bit um yeah it's not no issue leaving that in the engine uh we have the mechanism there and i will just compare that with another one i've got in here i've got another spare one so i'll show you the difference so you can see the two different types of mechanism. That is the auto choke one. That is a choke one. That is the choke mechanism there. So that's why you have to change it because you need that to move your choke. So yeah, that's the difference. And the other difference is on top of the carb, it's a mechanism on there as well. I don't know whether I could change it over. 
I possibly could. I've never tried. I've never, um, I've always had spare parts, so I've never tried to change it over. But yeah, that is much different. If you remember when I showed you the choke earlier, I will just put the photo in now. So that's why I needed all the parts I show you at the beginning of the video, because there's so many little bits that are different. So I've now fitted the replacement throttle cable. I've tested the mower off camera. It worked perfectly. It choked as it should, and it ran as it should. So that's a good job. I'm just going to show you in here where it chokes. So if you can just see in there, choking there on, off, on, off. So that's working perfectly. I just put this cover back on and I have replaced the housing, the air filter housing. So that clips in properly now. And that's it. That's how you change it from an automatic choke to a manual choke. Not very hard, a bit fiddly, but if you've got the parts, yeah, it doesn't take long at all. So I hope the video has been of some help to you. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll be along with another video again soon. So bye for now.